Yeah. Uh, John, um, so I have to say, one, I, have, I have one of my biggest pet peeves when people interview on occasion is when somebody says, you might know the name, but you don't know the face. And I'm saying to myself, if you don't know John Carroll Lynch by now, you're, you're in the wrong hobby or whatever. I mean, my God. I mean, that's like me watching a, um, a, a Kansas City Chief game. So I don't know who Patrick Mahomes is. I know that guy's face, but I don't know his name. That's insanity to me, John. I, I really don't. Uh, I actually take it as a bit of a compliment, to be honest. Uh, yeah. The fact that I've been able to do so much work and that people don't put it together. Do you know? Do you know the actor John Ortiz? Of course. So John Ortiz, I'm watching John Ortiz, and it was maybe like the fifth time or something like that that I saw him, and I said, "That's John Ortiz. That's John Ortiz. That's John Ortiz. That's John Ortiz." In my head, because. I kept on forgetting what his name was yeah. because he would present as the character and I would not think of him as anything else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, and that's what he does. I adore his work because he just vanishes and he doesn't vanish necessarily as, you know, in a transformation, he just tells you he's somebody different and he's somebody different. So if that's the reason why people are, are going, who is that guy? I know that guy. That's good for me. No, I agree. And and, I, and they don't say it to be me. It's just, a, I think it's a very lazy narrative. But, um, you know, the other thing I want to say as an actor, <laughs> what, one, thing you, one thing you do really, really well, um, of the many things you do well, is you are a master of making every second count. You don't ever waste a moment. Is that something that comes with training, John? Is that something that comes with experience? Is that something that comes with both? Because, I mean, we're going to get to Eastman for a couple of questions in a second. But, like, how do you... Is that something you've mastered that? I, I I see very few actors do that as well as you do it. It's kind of you to say. Um, as a as a, someone who, uh, I, I just feel like um, time is, uh, how do I say this the right way? Um I've played a lot of characters that have two scenes, three scenes, you know, one right. scene. And in those uh, scenes, there's usually impactful moments uh, to the film. Uh, Zodiac as an example, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in two scenes in the film and uh, three really technically three scenes in the film. And uh, the character has such a massive impact on the story. That's kind of how it should be uh, if you have three scenes. Um, I think that um, I, I don't know exactly what to say other than to say I've been very fortunate to play characters that have impact on, even if they're small, in comparison to the overall, like Eastman or, you know, like Twisty, um, they have an impact. Right. So um, that's 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 what you're looking for is is uh, opportunities to make a difference. Yeah, so so that's a great answer. Um, on my fifty years on this planet, I feel like I've seen thousands of movies, and there's there's a select few of movies and shows that have touched my heart at the next level, like they've altered my perspective on life. Um, Shawshank, The Green Mile, for movies, there's others, but for a TV show, there's not even one that touches here's not here. Like John, I probably think about that episode once a day, and I saw it ten years ago. If you can believe that, it's almost ten years now yeah. that episode came out. John. Your work in that is about as perfect as I've ever seen. And I'm not just blowing smoke here. Like, I, I appreciate can't even, that. Thank I you. can't even convey to you how important that was to me and so many people. The words were so beautiful, the care it was take, that was taken. Um, you know, Scott Kemple started writing that episode a year in advance of its production. He would call up Lenny James uh, and tell him about things that he was doing in an, in the, an episode in the previous season, he said, I know this doesn't make any sense right now, but it'll all pay off when you meet Eastman. It'll all pay off. Things like the Goo Goo Clusters or the hmm. Rabbit's Foot or other things like that. And, um, and so he, he feathered in the character's um, impact on Morgan throughout the previous season. They separated the uh, the work uh, in the season. To, they usually do. T they did two ten episode seasons every year. Okay, mm -hmm. and this one was going to be sh um, shown as the fourth or fifth episode of the season. But Scott Gimple waited until it, it shot it in the number ten slot, right? Because he wanted to focus on this episode. It was so important. 
When you have that kind of care and the words that are so beautiful and so easy to get behind, um, it really felt good. Also, um, all acting is a team sport, as Alan Arkin said. Um, and, yeah. uh, and to act with Lenny James is to act with a partner who listens uh, and responds to you so organically and so in the moment that you're called to do the same. Uh, and uh, so uh, it has, an Im- again, a, a role that has an impact, partly because you are watching Morgan for the rest of the time Morgan has been around that show, yeah. living with that episode as he has. You know, John, and I rewatched it. I rewatched it thousands of times. I rewatched it knowing we were going to speak. And there was the one line. I don't know how I missed this the first couple of times where Eastman says to him, and, 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 and he's going, Morgan's going through hell on earth. He says, you're going to hold a baby again. And my wife, my wife comes in and I've got tears coming down. And this episode's 10 years old. I should know it's coming. And it still has this effect on me. It's insane, John. That's insane. I feel like a, I feel like a lunatic. I, I don't know. It's just such a wonderful. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful that uh, this work can touch people so deeply? Yeah. I mean, I it, mean, uh, there's a, there's a scene in the, uh, in Cyrano de Bergerac that I think about all the time. I've seen the show a few times and every time it, it hits me. Ragano is this baker and he uh, has all these poets. He wants to be a poet and he has all these poets to his bakery and they just eat him out of house and home. Mm. But he used, he allows Cyrano, another poet, to meet Roxanne in the back room of his bakery. And that's when uh, Cyrano realizes that Roxanne is in love with Christian. And... Um, then uh, Ragano comes back and says, how did it go? And Cyrano just lays into him. He calls him a fool. He calls him, you know, he says, you, those poets don't like your poetry. They don't care about you. They're just coming here for a free meal. Your poetry sucks and you're a fool. Mm. And Ragano says, well, they need to eat. <laughs> that is great. That is great. And it's just perfect yeah uh, i mean it's a perfect thing and for for where morgan is where lenny's character is at the beginning of that and for someone to say to him the he there is healing available to you that will allow you to hold the baby again those are words you want to say to somebody yeah no oh, there's so much and this will be the last thing that i want to jump into this wonderful new project during the last thing i'll say is i've been dying 10 years to ask you this you know, uh, when Eastman talks about all life is precious, and I have to show you this before I go on. I met you in Boston. Yeah. Uh, and you were so kind to your fans. But um, when he's at the table, when he's at the table with him and he says, I believe all life is precious, that's why we're eating oatmeal burgers. Why does he stop short of telling him what he actually did with with um with Crichton Dallas? Why does he stop? Why does he tell why does Lenny have to find out later on his own? Shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you feel as if you need redemption or not. Right. I certainly do. Mm. And um, the reasons why I feel I need redemption come from remorse, regret, and bad choices. Mm. Um, Eastman's choice to kill a man so personally it doesn't feel good i mean he he has gained from it but it is the wound that drives him to peace Mm. and that's why he doesn't want to share it partly because it's really none of his business (laughs) no that's a great answer that's a really sweet answer yeah that's a great answer um, you know, just moving on here, if I had to add another movie to that list I gave you earlier, I might add Harry Dean Stanton straight story to that list. Uh, but that's a, a conversation for another time. That's yeah, yeah, a beautiful, yeah. um, so outlaw posse is a load of fun. I loved it. Like, it's just a, it's, there's so much to it. I, I People ask me, well, what it's like, I said, well, it's kind of like blazing saddles. It's got a little dirty dozen. In it. It's got a little, you know, I love your character. I love the beard. I love, um, I don't know. I just feel like this is one of those projects. that's a lot of fun for an actor to shoot. Right. I feel like. 
you you have you have a direct you have an actor's director in, in MVP like he's just a a good you could tell he's paid his dues a good guy talk about oh. your experiences talk about Carson talk about this really fun fun movie John you know the movie is fun and it is it does uh, transform from scene to scene uh, it, it it encompasses a lot of um, uh, of what what westerns have been. Uh, and uh, I I love that it's not a it's not attempting to be a historical um, western. What it's what it's attempting, and I think he succeeds at it, is he is um, recasting Hollywood's West, mm. not not the the wild not the West of this country because the West of this country included everybody in it. Everybody was there. Everybody was there. Mm. Hollywood was the one that uh, Hollywood was the one that told stories in which people weren't there. Mm. And they did that for a lot of different reasons. Uh, blindness being one of them. Mm. But, uh, but it's great that he, he made such a fun Western honors the Western genre in such a fundamental way, purely out of joy right. of his own love for it. And then he and then he takes it and invites everybody in to have ownership over that genre and to say, you know what, we love it too. We are we are all in the Hollywood West, yeah. Which I love, yeah. Um, you know, the acting Carson was such a fun character to play because he is um, he's so gentle, so joyous, and so brutal. Yes, and um, and uh, he has. And he does it out of loyalty and love, you know. Yeah, yeah. He loves those people. He loves the, his. He loves his friends, and he's loyal and trustworthy. Yeah, and those are things that are that are um, underrated gifts. Uh, uh, underrated gifts in people. Yeah, uh, and it's really fun. It was really funny, you know. I mean. Uh, it was it was just a great time to shoot. You know, you get to ride horses, you get to, you know, act with amazing people. And every day there's somebody new that comes in, Cedric the Entertainer and <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg and Edward James Olmos. And it just goes on. And Emmett Walsh, you know. Yeah. Uh, which I who I didn't get to act with, but I, you know, I adore M. Emmett Walsh. And it's just it just goes on and on and on. It was just a lot of fun. John, he has a reputation, uh, Mario does, as having a very collaborative, uh, as I mentioned, person. You know, you directed Lucky, which is such a great movie. Never mind, just a, I'm not going to categorize by saying Western. It's a it's a story about life. Um, you know, but yeah. did, did you find that uh, Mario was open to what you had to say? Because, I mean, you wear a lot of different hats. You're as, he, as does he. You're a director. You're obviously an actor. Is he Was it that type of environment on set where he was open to, like, what you had to say? Or was it just, this is what we're doing and let's, let's go? Oh no! It was it was as collaborative as, as collaborative as I've ever experienced it. Wow! And at the same time, um, he had a huge amount of material to get through, and he is so being around him when he's shooting. He's he's such a vital um, storyteller, and so improvisational, and he knows more about he's forgotten more about filmmaking than I will ever know. Mm. And, and it shows in the way he does, he goes about his business. There were so many moments where we would be finished with a, a setup and he'd look at the set and go, okay, I need these three. I need these three moments. Well, we're losing the light. Okay. Let's get these three things, the handle of this st stagecoach or, you know, um, that, that was an example of that kind of thing. I need, I need this. I need a, a shot of somebody's foot coming out. Forget who it was, but coming out of the stagecoach. He just could see in his head, not just the performance, but the ways in which he would cut through the cut the performance, and he would give himself things, and he would chase after these things. And people would, I mean, the crew had to be really adaptable because a lot of the stuff was happening while we were shooting. Uh, it was uh, opportunistic um, and mercenary, you yeah, know. Yeah. It was incredible how yeah. vital that was. John, I will forever be a fan, and thank you for this. I really thank appreciate you. it. You're a wonderful talent. Thank you for this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have yep. a great day. You too.
It's about redirecting. Evading. And actually caring about the welfare of your opponent. So you have to care about yourself. You have to believe your life is precious, that all life is precious. You have to redirect those thoughts, the history that tells you otherwise. What we've done, we've done. We evaded by moving forward with a code to never do it again. To make up for it. To still accept what we were. self. So. 